All right, it's time to get in this word. Now, we was going over jealousy yesterday. Uh, jealousy of the Most High. And we're going to shift and go into another topic. But there are some scriptures that we did not bring out fully. All right. I want Job 121. This is the book of Job chapter 1 verse 21. And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. All right. So... That right there is the truth about the nation of Israel, if you can get that. The Lord gave, and the Lord takes away. And we are to still bless His name. The Lord is jealous, and He wants nothing in the way of His praise, and He definitely doesn't want anybody taking His praise. All right, now there was also a scripture we went over that didn't get fully brought out. And this is going to be in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 3. This is going to be verse 14. This is the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 3, verse 14. And therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice nor offering forever. All right, so God is speaking to the prophet Samuel. And he literally says that the sin of Eli's house will not be covered with sacrifice. Now, according to the New Testament, and how most people believe that Jesus was the sacrifice for our sins. How can that cover Eli's house? Can it cover it? Uh -uh. Why can't it cover it? Uh. It's okay if you don't know. I don't know. All right. So the reason why, first of all, let's get that scripture and we're going to move a little bit and we're going to go to Deuteronomy chapter 24. This is going to be verse 16. Somebody read that. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 24 verse 16. The father shall not be put to death for the children. Neither shall the children be put to death for their fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Alright, so the Most High is speaking because the first five books came from the Most High. He wrote it with his own finger. So the Most High tells us that no father or no son can pay for one another's sin. That everyone is accountable for his own actions. So let's get another precept for that. This is going to be in the book of Ezekiel chapter 18. And let's go to verse 20. This is the book of Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 20. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. And the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Alright, so we understand. According to these two Bible scriptures right here. Can't nobody pay for your sin anyway. Now we're going to go back. And we're going to prove. Further prove. How sacrifice cannot atone for Eli's house. This is going to be the book of 1 Samuel. Chapter 3. Let's start off at verse 13. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth, because his sons made themselves vile, and he restrained them not. All right. And therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice nor offering forever. Wow. 
That is deep. So he specifically said it is not going to be atoned for by sacrifice or offering. So this is what I got for these Israelite camps. They lie. They know for a fact that the Bible says can't nobody pay for your sins. All right. So what if somebody in one of these camps is from the house of Eli? All right. They will not be atoned for. Not by meat offering or sacrifice forever. And not only that, we just put the nail in the coffin when we went to Deuteronomy chapter 24 and Ezekiel 18 when it says, Can't no man pay for one another's sin. This is what I mean when I say the Bible speaks two different things. It's a double-edged sword. You can find scriptures that are contrary to other scriptures. Now here we have the Most High. He literally said, The Son shall not pay for the Father's sin, and the Father shall not pay for the Son's sin. Everyone is going to be responsible for their own sins. Going back down to verse 14, He literally says, It shall not be purged with sacrifice nor offering forever. All right, so that's metaphorically speaking of the Christian church, okay? They are so full of sacrifices. They literally believe that Jesus can atone for our sins when the Bible is against human sacrifice. So now we want to go on to where we was going to go, the next topic. All right, and this is going to be getting on jealousy a little bit, but it's also going to be getting on the kingdom being taken from Israel. But I want to start off at Romans 10:19. This is the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 19. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people. And by a foolish nation, I will anger you. All right. So this scripture is coming from Deuteronomy 32, 21. Now he is speaking to Israel at this time in the book of Deuteronomy. Was there a split in the kingdom yet? No. Say it louder. No. The answer is no. There was no split. He was speaking to Israel as a whole because they haven't yet been divided. And he literally says, I will provoke Israel. So that is speaking of both the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Because like I just said, they haven't been divided yet. So he said, I will provoke you, Israel, to jealousy by someone who is not a people. What's another word for a person who is not a people? Gentile. Say it louder. Gentile. Gentile. She is correct. So let's get some further knowledge on that. Let's, let's read Romans 10, 20. But Esaias is very bold and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. All right, so here we are. Now, my question is to these Israelite camps, what do they do with these verses? How do they understand these verses? This is in the New Testament. Paul is talking about the Gentiles, people who are no people. And Isaiah is the one who is given this prophecy in verse 20. And he said, I was found... By them that sought me not. In other words, people who did not look for me. I was found by them. I was made manifest unto them that asked not for me. So in other words, God was shown to people who wasn't even asking for him. Now let's go to verse 21. But to Israel he saith, All day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. So this proves, y'all, this 
proves that this nation he is speaking of is not Israel. Because right here in verse 19, he said, I'm going to provoke Israel to jealousy by them who are no people. And then he goes further into detail and says, Isaiah is very bold and said he was found by them that didn't look for him. He was made manifest unto them that didn't ask for him. So that is speaking of a Gentile nation. Now he's going to go back to the Israelite nation in verse 21 when he says, but to Israel. So now he switched and went right back to Israel after speaking of the Gentiles. All day long, I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Now we need to go further, further into this. Let's go to the book of Romans again. Chapter 11, verse 11. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. He literally said, because Israel fell as a nation, the doors are open. The doors are open. Now there's a key word that's coming up in verse 12. But remember, God wants to make Israel jealous. Now how can he make Israel jealous by taking some Gentiles and making some Gentiles their servants? No. He has to take a Gentile, all right, and then put Israel up under them to make, that's how you're going to make somebody jealous, all right? So let's finish verse 11 of Romans 11. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. All right, now let's keep going. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world. Be the what? Be the riches of the world. So the fall of who will be the riches of the world? Israel. The fall of Israel will be the riches of the what? Of the world. Of the world. Now let's keep going. And the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles. How much more their fullness? All right, now let's go to Revelation 2.9. Hold your place where you at. Make sure you get these scriptures down. But I need somebody to go to Revelation 2.9. Because now we're going to see something that's been in this Bible the whole time. Keep in mind. He said, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. <clears throat> then he goes down and say, for their fall, salvation has come upon the world. And then he said, it's the riches of the Gentiles. Now we're going to understand Revelation 2.9. Let's get that. There's the book of Revelation chapter 2 verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. All right. Now read that over and I'm going to stop you this time. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. All right. But you are rich. He literally just said, you are rich. Now, remember I said, hold your place. We're going back to Romans eleven twelve. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world, speaking of the Israelites, and the diminishing of them. So what happened? Israel has been diminished. Israel has been diminished. Why? For the riches of the Gentiles. So now we understand that when he said the riches, he was speaking of the Gentiles. So now when we go back to Revelations 2.9, who is Jesus talking to? Stop when you get to you are rich. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. But you are rich. Who is he talking to? Israel. No, who is he talking to? The answer is in Romans 12. Of them that are not a people. Speak again. Y'all both right. 
Gentiles. Gentiles is what I want to hear. Gentiles is in the context. Can we get Romans 11, 12 read again? Just the book of Romans chapter 11, verse 12. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? All right, so now when we see this, and we're going to look at this in another translation, this is going to help you. Let's get the Douay Rheims Bible. Now if the offense of them be the riches of the world, and the diminution of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more the fullness of them? All right, so now we need to look at that word diminution. Yeah, we're going to break down some things and get some understanding. All right, somebody read um, what diminution is. The act, process, or an instance of becoming gradually less as in size or importance. Or importance! <laughs> so here we have right here in our own Bible that Israel that was high above all nations, now what happened? They gradually became less and less important. Another synonym would be decline. All right? Or the word they use in the King James, diminish. Let's look at that word diminish. It's on the screen. Somebody read that. To make less or cause to appear less. All right. Look at definition two. To lessen with authority. To lessen what? To lessen the authority, dignity, or reputation of belittle. Belittle. So Israel, okay, we was high above all nations. But because us breaking the commandments, God provoked us to jealousy with another nation. And by him doing that, Israel was diminished. And this is stuff you do not see them bring out. Now, Paul talked about their fullness and he talked about them being gathered back. He's basically saying in a nutshell, that if the casting away of Israel be the reconciliation of the world, how much more shall their fullness be? But we want to focus on what actually happened to Israel because a lot of these camps do not want to bring it out. So I'm going to look at another translation of what happened. Let's look at the New Living Translation. Now, if the Gentiles were enriched because the people of Israel turned down God's offer of salvation, think how much greater a blessing the world will share when they finally accept it. All right, so the casting away of Israel was the first step into Israel being diminished. They became diminished. And this is proven in Galatians 6.3. Somebody get Galatians 6.3. This is the book of Galatians chapter 6 verse 3. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Alright, so here we have in the New Testament. He said, if you think you are something, you are deceiving yourself because you are nothing. But let's go to Deuteronomy 7.6. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people. Above who? All people that are upon the face of the earth. All right, so Israel used to be. Like I tell these guys in the comments. They make comments and then they run from their own mouth. If you come to my page... You better know what you're talking about, and you better have scriptures, not your feelings, and not your own words. Because I'm not picking with nobody. But if you come over here, you better be ready, because I am going to throw some ammo at you. I'm going to throw scriptures at you, not my own words. So now we need to understand 
that Israel used to be high above all nations. Now there's a scripture in the book of Isaiah chapter 40 verse 15 and 17. It's the book of Isaiah chapter 40 verse 15. Behold the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as a small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the aisles as a very little thing. All right, so a lot of the camps, when they bring this out, they like, yeah, don't nobody cry over spilled a uh, cup of water, you know? They speak of the other nations as nothing, but they spend most of their time talking about the other nations all the time. Let's keep going. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beasts thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. Let's keep going. All nations before him are as nothing. All nations are what? Are as nothing. Are as nothing. So that's what we used to be able to boast about. We used to be able to boast and say, you know what? We high above all nations and the other nations are nothing. And second Ezra, let's get that. Y'all already know what I want. I ain't even got to tell y'all what verse. Let's see who gets it. This is the book of 2nd Ezra chapter 6 verse 56. As for the other people which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing. They are what? They are nothing. All right, keep going. But be like unto spittle. And has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. Alright, that's going back to where we was just at. Isaiah 40, keep going. And now, O Lord, behold, these heathen, which have ever been reputed as nothing, have begun to be lords over us and to devour us. Alright, so Ezra's, or Ezra, that's who he really is. Ezra's couldn't handle that these other nations, which are nothing... Now became lords over them. You know what was happening? Israel was diminishing. Every time Israel broke God's commands, you know what happened to them as a nation? They got smaller, they got smaller, they got smaller, and they got smaller, they got smaller. They got to the point that they became a dunghill. Anybody knows what a dunghill is? A poop hill. A poop hill. And then they got to the point where God cast them out of the poop hill. Because at least they was even in their own city. They was at least in their own city when they was in the dung hill. But I'm going to show you scripture that God even cast them out of Israel. Cast them out of the dung hill. So Israel diminished as a nation. Now let's go... To Romans 12, 3, because I like to cut the devil head off with his own sword. That's the reason why I go through the letters of Paul. Because Christians, they worship Paul more than they worship God. And they respect Paul more of their leader than even Christ. Alright, so let's get that in Romans chapter 12, verse 3. This is the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 3. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than Hold up! I thought we was high above all nations! I thought we was set above every people and everybody was nothing! Now Paul is basically saying, hey, think soberly. Okay, why? Let's keep going. Not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. But to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. God gave everybody the measure of faith. Regardless of who you are, what nationality you come from, we all have faith. This is proven. If you read through the Gospels, there were people who wasn't even Israelites that had faith. Now Israel diminished. Israel became small. So now we understand who Jesus was talking to in Revelation 2, 9. Let's get that. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. All right, you know why they not? Because Israel diminished. You ain't nobody no more. So who was he really speaking to? He was speaking to Gentiles. 
been studying this Bible for a long time. And I never picked that up until today. When he literally said, you are rich. He was speaking to the Gentiles. So let's go to Revelation 3.9. This is the book of Revelation chapter 3 verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved you. Jesus is smearing it in the Jews' face that he loves the other nations. He said, you know what? I'm going to make Israel bow down. That's exactly what Jesus was saying. He was literally dissing the Jews. Because the Jews, they were Abraham's seed. But he said, you know what? You seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. And he said, I know you, Abraham's seed. And then he said, you know what? Your father is the devil. According to the Bible, not your emotions, Jesus only called the southern kingdom devils. I say this all the time. Jesus was casting out devils. Casting out devils, casting out devils, and lo and behold, he cast out the devil, Israel, in 70 AD. So now he's making Israel jealous by bringing the other nations in. So now let's go to Matthew chapter 21, verse 42. It's on the screen. Let's go. This is the book of Matthew chapter 21, verse 42. Jesus said unto them, Did ye never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? The same has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Now, i got to open up your eyes a little bit, because a lot of y'all cannot understand that scripture. Now, this is why Jesus was a mighty prophet. Look what he says. He said, Did you not ever read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? Now think about the word rejected. You got to think about the word refused, okay? Someone who was cast away. All right, think about Hagar and Ishmael, okay? Abraham sent them away. He sent her away with a water jug, and according to the Bible, he put a teenager on Hagar's shoulder and had her and him Get out of Dodge. He sent them away with nothing but a jug of water. All right? Now, think about this. According to the Bible, God got so fed up with Israel, guess what he did to Israel? What did he do to Jeconiah and his mama? What did God do to Jeconiah and his mama? In Jeremiah 22, we went over this. He killed them? No. He put them out. Let's get that real quick. Jeremiah 22, verse 26. I think I heard somebody say that. Let's go. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 22, verse 26. And I will cast thee out, and thy mother that bare thee, into another country where ye were not born, and there shall ye die. So, he didn't kill him, but he kicked him and his mama out. And then look what he says at the bottom. Let's start at verse 29. O earth, 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 hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, write ye this man childless, a man that shall not prosper in his days, for no man of his seed shall prosper, sitting upon the throne of David and ruling any more in Judah. Wow! You know this is the same man that's in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. And God literally just said, ain't no more kings in Judah, no more. And from that point on, all we've had from the nation of Judah was the G's, the governors. <laughs> we had the GG's, just Governor Zerubbabel, Governor Nehemiah, all right? And even talks about Christ being a governor, just like Joseph was a governor, all right? So we got this stuff in the scriptures going back to Matthew 21 42 now we got to understand this Jesus said have you not ever read the stone which the builders rejected in other words 
the people that was cast out, they was nobodies, they was nothing. This same nation, I'm going to make them the head of the cornerstone. They finna be over the house. They finna rule the house of Judah. And then look how Jesus humbly says, this is the Lord's doings. And it's marvelous in our eyes. So you got to understand that Jesus, peace be upon him, he was not a hater. He was just like, you know what? The stone that the builders rejected, this same stone has become the chief cornerstone. And it's marvelous in our eyes. And it's marvelous in our eyes. You know, this is, this is very humbling for an Israelite to say. He literally just rejoiced in God's picking. So let's read verse 43 now. Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. Alright, so that's, that's what he was saying. He was saying the same thing in the book of Romans where we was at. Now we just seen it in the book of Matthew. He said this in the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 32, verse 21. He said this in 2 Ezra 1, 24. Time will prevent me to even go there. But there's a few more scriptures, and I know we're going past the time, but there's a few scriptures we got to get on about this rich, okay? Because I'm going to prove to you that Israel used to be the rich. Now they became the poor. So let's get... Uh, it's on the screen. This is going to be Luke 153. This is the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 53. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He cast them out. I told you. God was exalting someone of a low nation, low degree. He was exalting someone that was not an Israelite. And the one who was an Israelite, he sent them away. Let's go to 1 Samuel 2, 6, and 7. It's on the screen. This is the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 2, verse 6. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. Let's stop right there. The Lord makes poor and the Lord makes rich. Israel used to be the rich. Now he's making them poor. And those who used to be poor, God is making them rich. Keep going. He bringeth low and lifteth up. Watch this. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill. All right, so that's somebody of another nation. That's a Gentile. Let's keep going. To set them among princes. Okay, to set them among princes, Israelites. We were supposed to be the princes of the world. So he's like, look, I'm going to set you in their place. Let's keep going. And to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's. And he hath set the world upon them. Wow. That is deep. That is deep. So I'm showing you these scriptures where he's literally saying, I have the power to give and take away. I have the power to make rich and make poor. I have the power to take your spot and give it to somebody else. So that's why they hated Jesus. The Pharisees hated him because he literally spoke of the kingdom going to another nation. Jesus was not fake. He didn't come in there. They could, he could have been king. But he was not going to be the king of Israel. Because he knew what God Almighty had in mind about Israel. God planned on debasing Israel. So let's go to Matthew 5.13 real quick. And then we got Luke 14.35. It's on the screen real quick. I know y'all flipping pages, but it's on the screen. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 13. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? Okay, so Israel used to be the salt of the earth, but watch this. It is thenceforth good for nothing. It's good for what? For nothing. It's nothing now, so what you gonna do with it? But to be cast out. Get out of Israel. I'm casting you out. I'm having the Romans come over here and they finna drive y'all up out of here. You can choose Africa or you can choose the other way, but you finna get ready to get out of Israel. Let's get Luke 14, 35. 
This is the book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 35. It is neither fit for the land, nor yet for the dunghill, but men cast it out. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. That's why he said, he that have ears, let him hear. Because he said, look, it was going to be good for the dunghill. All right, it's going to let you just stay in Israel and you was going to be at the dunghill. But he said, you know what? Now, I'm casting you out of here. You was the salt of the earth. But you know what? You're good for nothing. All right? And I got another scripture because this stuff is so good. And I know we almost at our time. We've been past it. But I need to get on the screen. We need Ezra 6.11. This is the book of Ezra, chapter 6, verse 11. Also I have made a decree, that whosoever shall alter this word, let timber be pulled down from his house, and being set up, let him be hanged thereon, and let his house be made a dunghill for this. Wow! Israel did all the above, too. He said, looky here. And this was someone of another nation. All right? This was Cyrus. Cyrus was saying this. He literally said, if you alter the Most High... If you alter this operation, you know, because he was charged to build a house for Jerusalem. And he said, whoever alter this word, his house is going to be made a dung hill. Dang. Now let's go to Daniel 3.29. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 3, verse 29. Therefore I made a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Now this was someone of another nation speaking like this, the king of Babylon, speaking about God's goodness. Now, I'm going to show you from the Bible. This is Lamentations 4 5, our last scripture. I'm going to show you from the Bible that Israel's house was made a dung hill. And after that, they got cast out. Let's get that. This is the book of Lamentations, chapter 4, verse 5. They that did feed delicately are desolate in the streets. They that were brought up in the scarlet. Embrace dunghills. All right, so those that were brought up in scarlet, that was the Israelites. We was decked out. Our women was decked out. We had jewels upon our faces. We had jewels on our ankles, bracelets. Man, we had the best garments. He said those that did feed delicately are desolate in the streets. And guess what? Those that was brought up in the best garments, now they embrace dung hills. So with that being concluded, we got this. We understand that God was not lying when he said, we are going to provoke Israel to jealousy. And guess what, Israelite camps? It wasn't the northern kingdom because they are Israel, fools. He's talking about another nation. He's talking about a Gentile nation. Let's go to our Bible reading.